This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. It has been an interesting week as volleyball continues to give surprises here and there. And there are some football teams that have made their way up to the top of the rankings right now. In the top 25, both these teams, as Southern Arkansas and Washita, continue to have undefeated records, both at 3-0. and And Southern Arkansas will be hosting Northwestern on Saturday, Washita hosting East Central on Saturday as well. And volleyball, two teams still undefeated in Great American Conference play, Harding and Henderson State. And they are headed for a big collision on Monday. That's going to be in Arkadelphia as the Harding Lady Bisons will be on the road to take on the Henderson State Reddies, who, by the way, are winners of 14 consecutive matches. So a big season so far for Henderson State. Speaking of Henderson State, we now have the opportunity to get to visit with the president, the 17th president of Henderson State University, Dr. Glenn Jones. Dr. Jones, thank you for taking time to be with us today on the GAC Weekly. And uh, one of the reasons I wanted to get to visit with you today, not only about the volleyball team, which is doing pretty well, but also about your role that you play representing the Great American Conference in Henderson State on the Division II President's Council. Uh, what does that entail, and uh, what goes into being on that President's Council? Well, the Division II President's Council itself is the highest-ranking governing body within all of Division II. So as uh, that council and the work of that council entails, we really set all the policies that really govern and protect the philosophies of Division II. And our primary philosophy is life in the balance. And this belief we have that as student athletes, they're students first, and they should have the opportunities to grow and excel and succeed academically, socially, in addition to athletically. And so we provide within Division II the greatest ratio of students participating in championship activities. We create these outstanding championship events and quality play. But more than anything else, we want to make certain that there's always that balance. So all of our rules and policies are designed to make certain that we protect that balance really at all costs. You know, most people get to see some of the results of policies or decisions made on the Division I level because of the television exposure. Are there any differences between policies and rules that are made D1 and D2? Not necessarily. There are some differences, but at their core, we're all concerned about the academic success of our students. We're all all concerned about the health, safety, and wellness. And as a member of the Board of Governors, we oversee all three divisions. And so those, there's, a, there's far more, there are far more commonalities than there are differences, and the commonalities really center around our students. We're all concerned about fairness and integrity within sport itself, and then governance itself to make certain that we're providing the right amount of oversight. And so from our standpoint, uh, at Division II, we have a great strategic plan. We call it Foundations for the Future which really sets out our strategic positioning priorities. And so for the funds we allocate throughout our 300-plus Division II institutions, they're designed to really advance those priorities at the conference level, but also at the individual university or college level. Speaking now with Dr. Glenn Jones from Henderson State University. And, Dr. Jones, that is one of the things that I did want to bring out as well, that not only are you on the President's Council, but also on the Board of Governors, uh, spanning all three divisions of the NCAA that's a big deal for the Great American Conference to have representation on that level. Well, we have a great group of colleagues within the JAC, my presidential colleagues, our athletics administrators, but also our conference commissioner does a great job, and he represents as well also. And so from our standpoint, it's just great to be a part of, of setting policy and making decisions that will advance all of the entire association. And the fact that we as members of the Great American Conference are a part of that my representation is great. I followed uh, President Jack Laster, who was there for a few years before he retired. And so it allows us to really make certain that as we're thinking about what's happening to student athletes nationally, we don't lose sight of the fact that even within our conference, there's a lot of uniqueness within Division II. And so there are public institutions, there are private institutions, there are religious affiliated institutions, those that are non religious affiliated, there are large schools, small schools. And there are schools isolated on both coasts, even in Division II. And so it's important that we understand that when we're making these decisions, we have to factor into the totality of the membership uh, into that equation. Dr. Jones, talk about something then that, that uh, as someone who looks from the outside or somewhat from the outside in, uh, the policies that you all make, something that uh, might stand out to someone like me looking at Division Two, watching the players on the field, on the court, uh, on whatever diamond and, and pitch that you might uh, might talk about, something that you all ha have done that's had an impact within these last couple of meetings. 
Well, a few years ago, the NCAA in introduced a sports science institute, which is led by Dr. Brian Hainline, and it's really designed to understand the impact of athletics on the overall wellness of our student athletes. And so we've partnered with the Department of Defense, and we're currently a part of the largest concussion study in the history of the world to really understand the impact of head trauma on student athletes, not just while they're playing, but also once they're finished playing. So our goal is to make certain that we're creating a very safe environment for our student athletes to participate in, but we also understand what's taking place when collisions happen in football or soccer or any of the other sports. But not only that, uh, we recently received the Rice Report on college basketball, and as a result of that report, we're looking at reforms that will impact all of the NCAA, all three divisions, and so mainly expanding the Board of Governors to add additional members who are completely independent. That is, they don't work for any college or university, but to make certain that we're adding in that additional perspective along the way. But just creating an environment where we remind the world and ourselves that they're students first and making certain that they're given every opportunity to earn their college degree while they're here. Speaking now with Dr. Glenn Jones from Henderson State <coughs> University. And Dr. Jones, is, as uh, I was looking at some of the things that, that you do, and you do so many things, I, I saw that you got a degree in accounting in 1992. I also got a degree in accounting in 1993. Now, yours, Henderson State, mine from fellow GAC member Southeastern. You took it a step farther, though, a uh, master's in taxation law and a uh, juris doctorate from the University of Arkansas Law School. Uh, with all those things and, and uh, all those uh, things on your resume that uh, not only uh, I'm sure hang on the wall, but also the things that, that you do throughout the community, how's there time to get all these things done and still run a <laughs> Division II university like this? Well, the only thing that hangs on my wall is my degree from Henderson State University. Okay. That's the most important one. But first and foremost, uh, I'm president of Henderson State University, so everything else falls in line after that. But with that said, my work with the NCAA advances and is consistent with my work here. We're not only talking about the student athletes at Henderson State University or those in the Great American Conference, but student athletes all around the country. There are hundreds of thousands of student athletes who participate under the umbrella of the NCAA. And for us to be able to have an incredible impact in the lives of these young men and young women, is a remarkable thing to be a part of. And so for us and any other president in the university, you see these student athletes participate. We'll also see them graduate at significantly high levels compared to the general student body. And that's something that we're all proud of. It's something we're part to be a, a part of. But that is advancing the mission of our university and every other university that exists within the NCAA. Well, and, and it's uh, clear that that is, that is a big deal to you and I'm sure also as it's, uh, you are representing that board how big the students are and, and how important that they are in, in uh, their personal lives and, and, and their growth not only on the field but also in the classroom and development for life yes. as, as they continue along. Well Dr. Jones before and I... We, and as we put our students out there I just wanted to point out that in terms of things that we've done that the average person may not be aware of is that we listen a lot to our students. We have a National Student Athlete Advisory Council mm -hmm. They actually are voting members in Division Two at our annual convention. convention. The students actually have a vote. That group does, and they carry a very strong voice. Uh, we have a student athlete advisory committee to the Board of Governors, and so we have we have dialogue with our students to make certain that we understand from their perspective exactly what they're experiencing, and that way our policies are really in line to meet their needs. I understand, and I, and I appreciate you offering that too because you're right. You would. May not may not know that. I don't think I knew that they actually had a vote in, in the convention as well. So that's uh, that is something else. Well, before I let you go, then uh, it does warrant attention, I believe, from the president, uh, a volleyball team that has definitely really come alive this season. And as we speak, 14 consecutive wins. Uh, talk about what that means then for the program, and and I would imagine also. Uh, in the classroom as well, these kids are doing well, but uh, it helps to bring students into the university when your athletic department is doing well. Well, just having an athletics department period does that. Our director of, of athletics, I'd like to brag on Sean Jones for a moment. Uh, our last year, in the past three semesters, we've had an average GPA of our sports team of over 3.0, and that's directly tied to the fact that he set a very high standard when he came here three and a half years ago that our students would indeed be students first. Uh, with that said, we're very excited and happy for Coach McDaniel and the success they're having so far. I know there's a lot of ball left to be played, and he'd be the first to tell you that. <laughs> but he's 
I guess he's in his second year now, and we just tasked him with rebuilding the program and doing it the right way with student athletes who are students first and foremost, who would represent the university with class and character. And then what happens on the court is something that he and they control. So we're excited for our student athletes for them to be experiencing this level of success so far. And we're just hopeful that they'll keep it going. But they are pretty hot right now. Uh, what 14 in a row, I think, is what you said. They're playing very well. They had a huge victory last night, and I know they're looking forward to Monday night as well. All right, the big matchup with Harding, battle of undefeateds within conference play coming up on Monday. That, again, will be in Arkadelphia. Uh, Dr. Glenn Jones, thank you very much for taking time with us today here on the GAC Weekly. And the GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To hear and see more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please tune in and watch and check us out on oklomasports.net, on arkansasports.net, and follow us on YouTube as well. Subscribe, YouTube, and search Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching the GAC Weekly.